Captain Zixnar of the Galactic Collection Fleet stood on the bridge of the flagship Eternal Harvest, his six eyes fixed on the blue-green orb growing larger in the viewscreen. Earth, a jewel among the stars, was about to become the latest addition to the Collector's vast menagerie of worlds. But little did they know, this seemingly mundane world was about to be their last. For the humans had a different name for this world, Earth, the Death World. Status report, Zixnar commanded, his tentacles twitching with anticipation. First Officer Quelta, a slender, crystalline being, glided forward. Captain, our initial scans show a primitive civilization. No significant technological advancements, no space travel capabilities. The dominant species appears to be in an early industrial phase. Zixnar's mouth parts clicked in satisfaction. Excellent. Prepare the landing party. We'll make our claim and begin resource extraction immediately. As the crew bustled about preparing for planetfall, science officer Vexlor approached the captain, concern etched across his gelatinous features. Sir, I've detected an anomaly in our scans. The data doesn't align with our records from the probe we sent centuries ago. Zixnar dismissed the concern with a wave of his upper appendage. Likely a malfunction. We'll sort it out once we're on the surface. The landing party, led by Zixnar himself, descended through Earth's atmosphere in a sleek silver craft. As they broke through the cloud cover, the true nature of their error became apparent. The surface below was not the patchwork of primitive settlements they had expected, but a sprawling metropolis of gleaming towers and impossibly advanced technology. Impossible, Zixnar muttered, his confidence evaporating. Quelta, explain this discrepancy. The first officer frantically reviewed the data. Sir, it appears there was an error in our calculations. We failed to account for time dilation effects. The probe's data is centuries out of date. Before Zixnar could respond, a transmission crackled through their ship's speakers. Unidentified vessel, you have entered restricted airspace. Identify yourself and state your purpose immediately. The voice was cool, authoritative, and decidedly not human. Zixnar exchanged glances with his crew before responding. This is Captain Zixnar of the Galactic Collection Fleet. We come to claim this world for our collection. A pause, then laughter. I'm afraid you're too late, Captain. Earth has been part of the Xaraxian Empire for over a century. Your claim is invalid. Zixnar's tentacles writhed in frustration. The Xaraxians, a notoriously territorial species known for their advanced technology and unyielding stance on territorial disputes. This complicated matters significantly. Perhaps we can negotiate, Zixnar offered, his mind racing to salvage the situation. We're interested in Earth's resources. Surely we can come to an arrangement that benefits both our peoples. Another pause. You may land at the following coordinates. We will discuss your proposal. But be warned, the Xeraxian Empire does not share. As their ship touched down in a vast plaza surrounded by towering structures that seemed to defy gravity, Zixnar and his crew were met by a delegation of Xeraxians. The tall, avian-like beings regarded the collectors with a mixture of amusement and disdain. High Counselor Kreax, the leader of the Xeraxian delegation, stepped forward. Welcome to Earth, Captain Zixnar. I trust you now understand the futility of your claim. Zixnar, drawing himself up to his full height, replied, Counselor, while we acknowledge your current occupation of this world, we believe there's room for cooperation. The collectors have vast experience in resource management and extraction. We could offer valuable expertise. Kreax's eyes narrowed. And in return, you'd want a share of Earth's resources? I think not. However, we are not unreasonable. Perhaps we can discuss limited trade agreements. As the two alien factions began their negotiations, neither noticed the shadowy figures moving in the periphery of the plaza. Humans, long suppressed by their Xeraxian overlords, saw an opportunity in this unexpected distraction. Sarah Chen, leader of the human resistance, watched the proceedings from a hidden vantage point, which was surprisingly easy to pull off. As the negotiations between the Collectors and Xeraxians dragged on, 
their initial tension gave way to a sense of camaraderie built on their shared disdain for humanity. They moved their talks to a luxurious conference room overlooking the sprawling city. Zixnar leaned back in his specially designed chair, his tentacles relaxed. I must admit, Counselor Kreax, you've done an impressive job with this planet. How do you manage to keep the humans in line so effectively? Kreax preened, his feathers ruffling with pride. Oh, it's almost embarrassingly simple. These humans are so easily manipulated. A few shiny gadgets here, some empty promises there, and they're putty in our talons. Really? Zixnar's eyes widened with interest. No resistance at all? Well, Kreax chuckled, there's always a few troublemakers but they're about as threatening as a Gorgolian slug. We don't even bother with heavy security measures anymore. Quelta, who had been quietly observing, chimed in. But surely a species capable of reaching an industrial age must have some capacity for complex thought. This elicited a round of laughter from the Xeraxian delegation. Subcommander Zreltok wiped a tear from his eye. Oh, you'd think so, wouldn't you? But no, they're hopeless. Watch this. Zreltok pressed a button, and a holographic display appeared, showing humans going about their daily lives in the city below. See? They just go about their routines, day in and day out. No questioning, no resistance. It's the easiest gig in the galaxy. Zixnar nodded appreciatively. I can see why you're reluctant to share. This setup is enviable. Indeed, Kreax agreed. The resources practically extract themselves. The humans do all the labor, thinking they're building a better future for themselves. He leaned in conspiratorially. Between you and me, we've got them so docile that we've cut our security forces by 80% in the last decade. Impressive, Zixnar mused. Perhaps we could come to an arrangement. We have extensive experience in resource extraction. We could optimize your operations, increase yield by at least 30%, all for a modest cut of the profits. Kreax stroked his beak thoughtfully. An intriguing proposition. Tell me more about these optimization techniques. As the aliens continued their discussion, growing more relaxed and boastful with each passing moment, they remained oblivious to the gathering storm beneath their feet. In the shadowy underbelly of the city, Sarah Chen addressed a room full of resistance fighters. This is the moment we've been waiting for, she said, her voice low but intense. The Xeraxians are distracted. Their security is lax. We'll never have a better chance to strike. A grizzled veteran named Marcus spoke up. But Sarah, even with their reduced numbers, the Xeraxians still have superior technology. How can we hope to overcome that? Sarah's eyes gleamed with determination. Because, Marcus, we have something they don't think we're capable of. Ingenuity. For years, we've been secretly adapting their tech, improving it. They think we're mindless drones, but we've been preparing for this day. She turned to a young tech expert. Zara, is the virus ready? Zara nodded, holding up a small device. Ready and waiting. Once uploaded, it'll disable their communications and defense systems. They'll be blind and deaf. Good, Sarah said. Remember, people, we're not just fighting for ourselves. We're fighting for every human on Earth and for all the generations to come. The Xeraxians think we're harmless, incapable of complex thought or organized resistance. Let's show them just how wrong they are. As the resistance finalized their plans, above them, the aliens continued their self-congratulatory conversation, blissfully unaware of the reckoning that was about to unfold. Zixnar raised a glass of shimmering liquid to easy conquests and docile species. Kreax clinked his glass against the collectors. And to the simple minds of humans, may they never rise to power or even command a pack of wild animals, so boring and so silly, ha 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 ha. Huh. As the aliens toasted to their perceived superiority, a tremor shook the building. At first, they dismissed it as a minor seismic event but then alarms began blaring throughout the complex. What's happening? Zixnar demanded, his tentacles writhing in agitation. Kreax's communicator crackled to life, filled with panicked voices and static. 
Sir, we're under attack. The humans, they've... Impossible. The transmission cut off abruptly. Kreax's feathers stood on end. Impossible. How could those simple-minded creatures possibly... His words were cut short as the conference room's doors burst open. Sarah Chen strode in, flanked by her resistance fighters, all armed with modified Zaraxian weapons. Surprise, Sarah said, her voice cold and hard. Did you really think we'd go quietly into the night? That we'd be suppressed forever for your bidding? Zixnar's eyes widened in shock. But, but our scans showed... Your scans showed what we wanted them to show, Marcus growled, stepping forward. You saw docility because that's what we needed you to see. But make no mistake, this is a death world, and we are its children. Kreax lunged for a hidden panel, but Zara was faster. With a few taps on her device, all systems in the room went dark. Looking for this? She smirked, holding up the alien equivalent of a master control key. Outside, the sound of battle echoed through the city. Humans, long suppressed but never broken, emerged from hiding places, armed with both alien tech and improvised weapons. Years of pent-up rage and the primal instinct to fight for survival fueled their assault. But it wasn't just the humans who were rising up. As if awakened by the battle cry of its native species, the earth itself seemed to come alive. The ground shook with increasing intensity, not from bombs or weapons, but from something deeper, more primordial. Sarah turned to the stunned aliens. This is our home world. No longer will you remain here. We've lived under the constant threat of extinction, adapted to survive in the harshest conditions. Did you really think a species forged in such fires would ever truly submit? As if on cue, a deafening roar echoed from deep within the earth. The aliens watched in horror as massive tentacles of stone and metal erupted from the ground, smashing through buildings and tossing vehicles aside like toys. What? What is that? Zixnar stammered, all six eyes wide with terror. Sarah smiled grimly. That is Earth, our planet, our ally. You treated it like a resource to be exploited, but it's alive, conscious and it doesn't take kindly to invaders. The colossal entity, a fusion of organic matter and advanced technology hidden beneath the planet's surface for millennia, continued to rise. It was as if the collective will of humanity had stirred awake a sleeping giant, a failsafe created by ancient humans for just such an occasion. Kreax turned to Sarah, his arrogance replaced by desperation. Please, we can negotiate. We'll leave peacefully. Just call off your... your... Our planet? Sarah finished for him. I'm afraid it's too late for negotiations. You had your chance for peace, and you chose suppression and exploitation instead. As the battle raged outside and the Earth itself joined the fray, Sarah addressed both alien factions. Let this be a lesson to you and any others who might think to claim our world. Humanity is not to be underestimated. We are survivors, adapters, fighters, and this planet, it's not just our home. It's our guardian. The giant Earth entity let out another Earth-shattering roar, its massive form now towering over the city. Zixnar and Kreax exchanged looks of abject terror as they realized the true nature of the world they had so gravely underestimated. Sarah's voice was steel as she delivered the final blow. Welcome to Earth, gentlemen. This is a Class 11 death world, and it now has awakened from a long slumber and will be no longer a place on easy mode for you soft aliens. Now prepare to leave, if you can. With that, the humans launched into action, their generations of fight-or-flight experiences, more on the side of fight than flight, culminating in this moment of liberation, while the Earth itself rose to cast out those who had dared to claim it as their own. The humans now liberated, went about salvaging alien tech and repurposed it for defense and making sure this doesn't happen again. Well, at very least, they will have a better chance now from any other future visitors.